Welcome back to RX Muscles Iron Road to the Olympia 2018, brought to you by Redcon One. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is, well, he's really a coach, he's a bodybuilder, he lives the lifestyle, he is probably best known as the coach of William Bonac and Flex Lewis. Uh, he's our good friend, Neil Hill. Hey guys, I want to say um, I massively appreciate this opportunity to um, be interviewed by Dave. I know this is something which is long overdue. So obviously, first and foremost, Dave, massive thank you, huge respect. And I also want to say a big thank you to Robin Chang and AMI for obviously making this happen with, with you guys. So first and foremost, as I said, I want to say thank you to all of you guys. And I'm looking forward to um, answering any questions that you throw at me, whatever you throw <laughs> at me, I'll answer it to my best ability. So fire well, yeah. away, my buddy. Yeah, it, yeah, it was. It's good to finally get you on interview because I know you have been kind of tied up on contract, and it was nice of Robin and the uh, AMI people to kind of let you come on here and talk a little bit because a lot of people don't really know much about Neil Hill. They kind of hear the name. You got the nickname Yoda, you know, which is obviously implying that you know you're you know a bit of a guru and, and for people, and you're you're one of these very hands-on coaches that takes a, a lot of pride in their in their athletes they work for. Um, but, you know, a lot of people, and I, myself included, really don't know where you came from. So, you know, we know what part of the world you came from, Wales, but how did you get involved in the whole bodybuilding industry initially? And, uh, you know, as far as competition and then coaching, of course. It was really by accident. So I never really had an interest in bodybuilding, though, at the same time, obviously, when you're growing up through your teenage years, you can't help but be inspired by muscular physiques. And this it doesn't make any difference how old you are, whether you're 12, 14, 16, 18, 30, 15, or whatever it may be. When you see somebody who has uh, a physique which is larger than life or muscular or lean, of course, you've got to obviously look at it. it it's, it's, it's a pretty cool, you know, specimen to look at. But what happened with me is that, you know, I kind of grew up in a, a pretty poor background for most of my life especially going up from the age of, you know, zero up to the age of like 20. But one of my best friends was extremely muscular, like super, super muscular. And you don't tend to see the sun much in the UK, but when you do, the shorts come out and the vests come out. And I always remember feeling very intimidated next to my friend come summertime because he was just, as I said, he was like genetically very, very muscular at a very young age. And um, I was a year older than him, we kind of hang out a lot together in school, out of school. And then when I left school, I, I served an apprenticeship working with Range Rover and Jaguar. And I actually was in the motor trade for 16 years as a technician. Mm. When he left, he actually joined the army. And obviously, randomly, when you're in the army, you'd have leave. So maybe every six months, you'd have, maybe have two or three weeks off. I remember him being back in his hometown where I lived. I was 19 years of age, and I happened to just bump into him at the time, and you know we catching up, chit chat, everything that goes with it. And he was saying he was going to the gym. He was actually just about to go to the gym. And I thought, Christ, this guy is muscular already. If he's going to go to the gym, I've got to go to the gym as well. And I walked into the gym, didn't have an idea what I was doing, and then I went to my first bodybuilding show about two weeks later. And as soon as I saw, obviously, these athletes on stage, straight away it was like. I want, a body, I want to be a bodybuilder. And it really went from there. And that was when I was 19 years of age. And I'm nearly 50 now, 49. So, you know, 30 years ago sure. is when I was first introduced to a bodybuilding show and what it was supposed to be. And I got hooked. It was instantaneously. <laughs> and I did my first bodybuilding show only after 12 weeks of training. There was very, very little muscle, of, no muscle on me at all because... <laughs> I, um, I was very active as a kid, so I was an international swimmer. I swam for Wales in the UK from oh, the wow. age of about 7 to 8 to 15. Super, super active in sport in multiple different disciplines. And um, I struggled in, sp in school, so I was dyslexic, had dyslexia in school, and it wasn't like diagnosed until I was pretty much finished secondary school. So wow. for me, my sport was my outlet. So, you know, sport gave me the ability to find myself and, and, and be on an even level playing field as everybody else. So I tended to excel on those things. So that's, how, that's pretty much it, really. And then obviously I had a, a very successful amateur career. I turned pro in 2002, but unfortunately because of a very, very bad knee injury, which was more of a hereditary issue, mm -hmm. I ended up having to you know, finish my bodybuilding just six months after winning my pro cards. And that took me a long time to get over mentally because mm -hmm. I was not ready to step away from competing. Um, I was extremely gifted as far as building muscle was concerned as long as I put all the efforts into what I needed to do. 
You know, Neil, I, what I wanted to say, you know, is that before this interview earlier this morning, Flex Lewis texted me and he said, I don't know if you know, but Neil Hill was one of the most shredded guys I've ever seen, you know, when he competed. And, and I didn't even, I really didn't know much about you. You know, I, we, we just put a picture up there of you. I didn't realize how, you know, ridiculously hard you got when you competed. Was that through using another coach or was that through a lot of your own research and, and, and your own methodologies? No, I've never had a coach. You know, I've never had a coach. I always coached myself. Um, I was also very distinctive. So I could see and feel what was taking place with my body. I could also see what was in front of me with my own eyes. So you know as well as I do, Dave, you'll get a lot of people who are very disillusioned. They walk on stage and they might say, you should have seen me two days ago. I was shredded. It was like, <laughs> oh, you're still over about 10 pounds of body fat. So I was very aware what was right in front of me when I looked in the mirror. And yes, my philosophies towards training and nutrition were very, very different to everybody else. Um, I'm not saying that I knew more than anyone else, but I felt that I knew my body. And I felt that, obviously, that that was something which is very important to me. Explain to the, the I, I understand the dynamics, maybe not, but explain to our uh, viewers out there, you guys are from Wales. Explain the dynamic yes. between England, Wales, Scotland. Explain what all that means and how it, how it coalesces in the bodybuilding organization over there? Um, well, obviously, we're united by being a part of the United Kingdom, Great Britain, UK. But we obviously all have our own nationalities and country with under the umbrella of the United Kingdom. So mm. if, you were, if you went to the UK, you would be able to drive from England to Scotland into Wales. There's no borders as such. That, you know, there's a border, but there's no security. It's just basically like going from one state to another state. Right. And Welsh bodybuilding has always been known to have a phenomenal high standard of athletes. I don't know, you know, the reason by being, I would say, it's got to be work ethic, basically. You know, people are very, very blue-collared, hard-working individuals. And when you have individuals which inspire you, you have something to chase. And there was always an athlete or athletes in different divisions mm -hmm. who would be representing Wales in what would be the UK national finals who would be placing extremely well. And Wales is very small as a country compared I, to yeah. England and other countries. So to, to produce such depth of talent, of course, there's got to be something to do with genetics. I don't think it's interbreeding, but there's some form of genetics <laughs> which obviously go, go into it. But I think it's just the fact that you always had somebody who would be inspiring you because you had somebody who was leading by example and you were surrounded by those individuals and you got drawn into the energy, I guess. Mm. Now, according to what Flex told me, you know, you met him at a very, very young age. Um, do, you yes. remember the day you, do you remember the day you first saw him? Yeah, I was actually, I was head judge at a show which I actually um, um, competed multiple times and did very well in. And I was competing the year before and I won my FBB pro card there. And Flex apparently was in the audience, I didn't know this. Right. And then what happened is obviously the following year, I was back as a guest star. I was there. Um, uh, I wasn't showing my physique. And I was judging. And I had heard a couple of people in the audience talking before the pre-judging had started about there was two really good individual bodybuilders in the junior class, which at that time was under 21. So to be a junior in the, in the UK, gotcha. you had to be under 21 years of age. And it was... For a couple of years, it seemed to be a struggle of getting the depth of talent with the young generation of um, juniors. It, probably for about two or three years, it lacked that depth. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I was, I kind of thought, yeah, you know, I haven't seen anything special for, you know, for a while now. And then all of a sudden, Flex Lewis, you know, steps on stage. I'm judging him. And <laughs> seriously, I can remember having goose pimples with his physique because he just had this aura of energy and professionalism instantly yeah i didn't even know that this was his first ever show and of course wow. he had the phenomenal legs his legs yeah. were super developed he had legs like a like a you know a very seasoned open class bodybuilder yet he had obviously the shape and structure of a very young um under 21 year old bodybuilder and um that's when i first saw him you know that's exactly when i first saw him and we spoke after pre-judging and um, I can remember his training partner at the time 
was a gentleman called Steve Naylor, and Steve had this phenomenal physique, very much like uh, an Arnold type of physique, right. but never really nailed his condition, even though he won multiple shows because of his shape and structure. Yeah. And I remember seeing Steve and saying, hey, Steve, you look great, probably the best I've seen you. And he said, listen, I want you to meet my training partner. He's a big fan of yours. And then he, he introduced me to Flex, and we spoke. And you know, I congratulated him what I just saw of him in the pre judging asked him if he was doing the British finals, and he said, no, I, I won't be doing the British finals. I'm not good enough you know, for that. I said, you're not good enough now looking like you are. I said, but, I said, you can win that show. Um, you know, you could win that show. And then we started working together literally a couple of days later, did the British championships four weeks later. He stepped on stage eight pound, seven pound heavier, and he looked about 12 pound leaner, and he went on to win the British finals. So wow. that was the start of our relationship. And that was 15 years ago. That's actually 16 years ago. Is it 16 years ago? 15 or 16 years ago now in September this year. Wow, that's a long, it's a long time, time flies. Uh, we're about yes. the same age, so I, I can relate to that. You know, you were kind of like still, you know, really in the prime at that point, and you know, we all were. And uh, now you look back, and it was like, wasn't that like yesterday? And you know, where yeah. did the time go? You know. Yeah, no, it's it's great to look back. You know, I've got some amazing memories with Flex. We've traveled the world. We travel literally everywhere together. Right. You know, competing as an amateur bodybuilder, and um, for me, you know, I'm a pretty super sensitive person. So for me, I don't take things for granted. Mm. I am very, I'm very conscious about my athlete's health and happiness. So for me, I don't play God with my athlete's health. My athletes are super healthy. You know, for me, um, you know, some people are reckless in what they're, when they're chasing a dream or a goal. For me, right. I want to have a relationship with my athletes which so surpass their competitive days on stage. And I've had some great, great, great times and great memories over the years with Flex and, you know, some of my new athletes, which, to be honest with you, you can't buy those things, you know, it's like time, you can't buy time, mm. you can't buy titles, but you can hold on to memories for a lifetime, and it's nice to be able to look back, you know, and, and, and smile about those things. Yeah, now, you know, you and I share a very similar philosophy in that respect, you know, that obviously the health of the athlete comes first, and the, 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 the career of an athlete is such a small time frame in their entire life that, uh, you'd be foolish to jeopardize uh, their health in that point. And you know, one of the things I really love about you, as because I've seen you, at, obviously we've seen each other at a million shows throughout the years all over the world, and you're probably one of the most passionate guys at these shows. If, if, if you know, you have to be at the show to see Neil. If Neil's athlete doesn't get a good, uh, you know, judging, or someone does something that he doesn't like, I mean, you just you can tell the energy of you. You're just so, such a part of the sport that you get irked, you get you know emotional, you get. Uh, excited, you get, you like go the whole gamut of every emotion that could possibly be, you know, experienced at these shows, which is something that a lot of other coaches don't experience. I think it's just because I've got a pair of eyes and obviously, you know, I've got my best interest with the athletes. But that being said, Dave, when I'm sitting in the audience, I do, dis I do disconnect my, my relationship with them as much as I possibly can. And I look at them with a pair of judges' eyes. You right. know, I, I do. You know, so for instance, the year that Flex came fifth as a 202 athlete, I can remember after pre-judging and we spoke and I remember him saying to me, what do you think? And I said, me personally, I put you fifth. And I remember he was hurt, you know, he wasn't annoyed or hurt with what I told him the truth. But of course he was wanting better. And I said, you know, we're not, we're not there today. You know, he'd been overworked, you know, he'd been on the road 24 seven with Gaspar. He didn't have an off season. We were going into the show in a very bad place because you need to be fresh and you need to be sure. reserved and you need to be in the right mental and physical state. So I'm not somebody who's going to say to my athlete, you should have been first, second, third or fourth, that they should have been 10th. I'm very, very brutally honest. Right. Literally Williams next door to me right now, and he's, I'm in maybe 305, he's in 306, and we just basically been going through his posing routine and, and critiquing his poses mm -hmm. over the last, you know, half an hour. And I'm very, very hard-ass on my athletes, you know. I mean, I, I am very, very, very blunt. Because you have to be. You can't sugarcoat shit. Mm -hmm. You know, sure. you know sh sugar isn't, you know, sugar is sugar. It's not salt. It, it is what it is. So, <laughs> you know, when I'm at these events, yeah, I'm, I'm very honest and I'm very real. But I'm also very respectful of the judges decisions and what they see in front of them because it's an objective sport like you know 
what you and I like to see as far as what we believe bodybuilding is about could be two totally different opposites. It doesn't mean that I'm right and it doesn't mean that you're wrong. It's the fact that we see things and maybe there are a lot of things that we'll see which are the same. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I am, I, you know, of course I'm, I'm, I'm a passionate uh, coach. But I'm still, I'm still that 19-year-old passionate bodybuilder <laughs> who went to the, his, you know, went to the gym and went to watch his first ever bodybuilding show and wanted to be a bodybuilder. I love the industry, mate, and the industry has changed so much. Sure. And I also think that it's amazing that the IFBB Pro League have given every single athlete an equal chance at displaying their physiques all around the world. And I think that, you know, we can't help but credit, you know, what they're doing worldwide. Obviously, they've broken away now. They've created an international amateur division, which is allowing these athletes, obviously, to go on to gain international exposure as an amateur and potentially become a pro. And I think that it's amazing, mate. Now, Neil, you're almost 50 years old now. Um, you're still traveling the world as much as ever. I mean, you're in, you're in Saudi Arabia now with William Bonag. You're meeting there as kind of like a, it's like a training camp, getting him ready for the Olympia, getting away from all the, the drama of, of where you guys both live. Um, is this something that you routinely do with William? And, and, and what is the reason that, that you're there right now? And how long will you stay? Okay, so I try to give my athletes as much equal time and attention as possible. Obviously, I'm living in, in Boca, Florida now. So Flex has a lot of my time. Um, sure. I moved there Feb February last year. So we probably train together two to three times a week. I see him nearly every day. Um, and it doesn't sit right for me not being able to give equal time and attention to all of my athletes. Um, you know, the Mr. Olympia is the most the pinnacle event in the world. Nothing comes close to it. And it's important to me that I, I share my time and my experience and my eyes with, um, with William as much as I do with Flex or as much as I do with Ryan Terry or whoever I got going into the Olympia, for instance. And us being in an environment with no distractions whatsoever, right. um, I think it allows us, it allows us to, to bring the best version of William you know, to the stage. And I know that you, you saw a video yesterday that you reposted it and it got a lot of negative yeah. comments on there, right? That's why I put that front of a bicep pose on my <laughs> post today. Because I'm telling you now, William does not look blocky. He does not look like he's widened his waist. And... Um, if all things being equal, and if we step on stage with the physique that I know that William is capable of bringing, he's going to create a lot of problems on stage. Yeah, and it's he's... obviously, that's happened multiple times before. So um, it's hard for William to be here because he's just had a, his girlfriend's just had a baby girl. And I know that William is, I wouldn't say struggling, but he is emotionally wanting to be home and be the best dad that sure. he can and support obviously his girlfriend, his family, his baby. But at the same time, Sue, his girlfriend, she's, an, she's a fantastic girl. She understands that, you know, he's also got to prioritize um, himself and his career because they also understand that, you know, William's success potentially brings them long term stability and that's you know and that's a great thing for me to be able to see that his wife is or his future wife is very supportive on that role and he's not a he's not a william is not a selfish individual so he's not the type of person to say i'm going to do this whether you like it or not right. it's it's hurting him to be away it's it's hard but it unfortunately or fortunately it allows us to be into a base camp and do what we need to do right right neil who gave you the nickname yoda I think that was flex, and I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, I think it was flex. Uh, I think was. that it's probably yeah. a lot of different people because you know one person says it, and um, and then obviously it rolls on, and um, and I think that most people kind of know of me because of my success with flex, and of course I love him to bits, mate. We're very very close. It's more than an athlete and right. coach relationship. You know, I feel that um, when he, you know, when we met at 19 years of age. You know, you can, and you can imagine this now, the industry. The industry is, well, the, so much is different nowadays because back when we were younger and competing, they, there was no social outlet, there was no yeah. internet. So the problem is with the internet, it gives the ability to learn so much, but there's so much bad negative in, uh, information out there, yep. which is reckless with what people do. Yep. And I'm glad that I met Flex when I met him because otherwise he may have gone down a different road, which may have brought him, you know, 
short term success. He may have gone to the dark side, Neil. Thank God yeah, you exactly. saved him. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, definitely. And um, um, my point is, is that even though people, you know, sort of associate me with Flex, I've had a huge amount of success, you know, in the industry with other amateurs and other pros, but also normal people, Dave, you know. Sure. So I like working with normal people. I, I work with a lot of corporate yeah. business. I like to work with a lot of corporate businessmen. I like to work with people who are overweight. I spent nearly two years in India, you know, working with some amazing people over there. And whether Flex goes on to win his seventh Mr. Olympia title or William goes on to create a big upset this year and win the Olympia. Winning that Olympia title doesn't mean that those athletes are going to go and live an extra five or ten years. My point is, is that when you're working with somebody who's a beast and they lose a massive amount of weight, that's putting life, that's putting years and years on their long-term health, and that to me is just reward, just as rewarding as seeing somebody winning the Mr. Olympia title. I'm sorry if it sounds like that I'm not appreciative or I'm not proud of the athletes because I am, but I'm also very aware that everybody has individual goals, and when you help those people see those goals and being achievable and being a part of that lifestyle with them, it's a great, great feeling. Mm. No, I agree with you. I, I always say to myself, uh, and I talk about it on my radio show all the time and all the TV shows, that I enjoy working with the regular people almost as much as I do yeah. the, the bodybuilders because you, do, you are making an impact, and, and they really, a lot of times, sometimes the, the competitors take it for granted, but I think the, the average person who you help change their life, and I love the term you used, beasts <laughs> there are a lot of beasts there's a lot of overweight people especially in the united states and uh you know it's great yeah. to be able to change their lives and, and alter who they you know who they where the path they were going on and maybe help them to live a longer healthier life um william, yeah. uh, william uh let me before i get to william i want let me ask you i want to just finish with flex uh, neil when you moved uh from the whales over to uh, Florida. Was that to be near Flex or was that just to get out of the cold of the UK? <laughs> well, at the moment, the, the UK has had an absolutely amazing summer, probably better weather in the UK yeah. than Florida's at the moment. So I've Yeah, but winter is a big the, difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I've been contemplating whether to move back to the UK for the summer months, but no, on a more, more serious note, it was for a couple of reasons. It was one, to be close to the Flex. Um, and have more, you know, personal hands-on time with him because mm -hmm. obviously we'd spoken about a number of different things from a competitive aspect of things to a business aspect of things. And right. also at the time, my present sponsors, BSN, were there as well. So it kind of made sense to right. um, to go to Boca. And I'll be honest with you, I'm enjoying the transition. I, I just take each day as it comes, though, to be honest with you. So... Um, I, of course, I have a goal in my head of what I want, where I want to be in one year, three years, five years, as far as my life is concerned. But at the moment, to be honest with you, there's so many things going on. I'm just taking each day as it comes, and I think that it's important that I focus on that on that aspect of things at the moment. Where, where would you like to be in two, three years? I mean, what's the ultimate goal for Neil Hill? Is it to continue coaching people? Do you want to start new businesses? I think I. Uh, <laughs> For me, I'd like a house. It gives me some, it gives me, it's, I'm a simple person. I mean, I've got goals in my head of what I want to achieve with my athletes. Of course I do. And I tend to keep those very, you know, much inside. So I am very self-motivated. I don't need people to motivate me. But for me, um, I'd like to be, I like a house. I like to be married. I like to think that I, I, you know, I've got somewhere to go home to. And at the moment, I don't feel like that. You know, I feel a little bit lost in the sense that, yeah, I'm renting somewhere in Florida, but it, it's, it's not, it, you know, it can be home, yes, but having a home to go home to and think, you know, I'm home now or having a partner to go mm -hmm. home and think I'm looking forward to going home to see my wife, etc. Yeah, I'm in a, a great relationship with my girlfriend. She's amazing. Alex, she supports me immensely. But at the same time, I like to feel like I've got more stability. So that is really important to me. As mm -hmm. far as my goals are concerned, um, I'm working on a, you know, a number of different projects. One, I'll be releasing my sub-site, which I'm super excited about. It's going to be very, very different to what's out there. Um, and I feel it's going to be an amazing platform with a wealth of inf real information, you know, real information. Um, I am looking forward to open up my academy, my Neil Hill uh, Y3T Academy, and, and, and help and educate people on what I feel is the correct way to 
build muscle, lose body fat in a healthy way, etc. Make the most out of your, your genetics, irrespective of where you are or what you are or where you're heading with your chosen goals. So there are multiple different things as far as a business front is concerned. But of course, I want to, I want to be there for my athletes and, and help them become the best of what they are. So you know, reach their true potential. Neil, you know, you're you're you are a hands-on guy, and you know, it's obvious by the fact that you're in Saudi Arabia with William Bonner. But you know, we mentioned we were talking before the show, and I, I really didn't know what your you know background was. And you you have two young boys that are 17 and 19 years of age. Is it difficult being away from them now that you're in Florida? Yeah, it is difficult because um, I think if you really got to know me, me and Flex are very similar with our personalities. We've got a bit of a messed up sense of humor. You know, we're also, you know, we can also be very real and relevant in the moment as well. And being away from my boys, it's hard for me, you know, it's emotionally hard because I, I'm very close to my boys mm -hmm. and not being there 24-7 um, because even though me and Angie, my ex-wife, we split up like over six years ago, um, I was still living in the same town. So I was literally just like 10 minutes away from them. Gotcha. Um, so not being there can it, it can make me feel not so good sometimes because it makes me feel guilty but at the same time they do understand um and of course i i speak to them as much as i possibly can my oldest boy hopefully is going to be coming out to see me straight after olympia and be with me for a good length of time whereas my youngest boy he'll be going into college so um you know obviously that's a little bit more difficult and i do try to go back to the uk and, and spend time with them where i can Mm -hmm. um, but I'm very lucky because they, they understand, you know, they, they, they understand. I, I know that they miss me as much as I miss them. Mm -hmm. And I think that as long as, you know, you have that love and respect for each other is that, um, I think that's more important than anything else because there's a lot of fathers out there. There's, you know, anybody can be a father or a mother or a parent, but being a good parent can be something different. There's probably a lot of parents who spend a lot more time with their children than me, but take that time for granted. I, I try to treasure the time I have with them. Mm. Good answer. Uh, I guess the question that is on everyone's mind, Neil, is uh, you know the big announcement that Flex made a couple weeks back that he was this would be his last 212 Olympia, and he really didn't mention much about it. But we had some speculation on the uh, Flex website. They said that you know he would be going to the Open at some point. I've heard rumors that he was thinking about going to the doing the Mr. Olympia in 2020. Coming right from your mouth, since I can't, I'm not going to be talking to Flex probably till after the Olympia. What's the future look like for Flex Lewis? And do you think that Flex Lewis could be an Olympia champion in the Open division as well? Okay, so I'm going to be very real here. Um, you may agree or disagree. <laughs> I feel that William. Um, I feel that Flex could take time off after this Olympia, irrelevant where he places, spend some really good quality time with his daughter and his wife, enjoying normality, having a holiday. And I think that's really, that's the top of my list. I mean, I spoke to Flex and Ali multiple times over the last few months and said, listen, make sure you book a holiday after this Olympia. Oh, we'll get around to do No, you need to book this. And I know that Ali's actually booked a holiday. So I feel that having proper quality time as a dad and a, and a, and a husband is, is the top of the list enjoy normality and then we could and then we could we could compete next year you know in an, in open shows and i do feel that flex has the physique to win open shows next year now i'm very selective or i'd be very selective what open shows that we do because no i'm not saying he could step on stage in the arnold next year or the olympia and win because that's not going to happen yeah. i'm sorry it's, it's not that i don't believe in his abilities i know what he's capable of now let's put some perspectives on this Flex started Olympia prep at about 16 weeks out, thereabouts. And he was roughly, he was probably about 224 at the time. 224. He's grown into this show immensely. And this morning he sent me his body weight and he was 220. So the, the lightest he's been on this prep roughly has been about 219.5. But say he's 220 now this morning. Mm. My point is, Dave, how could we start Olympia prep? at about 224 at 16 weeks out, <laughs> at about 12% body fat, and then now standing there at four pound lighter and be roughly about 4% body fat. Now, how is that possible? You know, how is that possible? It's possible because we created the perfect environment to lose body fat and gain muscle tissue. So my point is that Flex grows into the diet very, very well. 
We can't do that in the off season as a two twelve athlete. We can't have a proper off season because right. he would never make weight. Right. He just wouldn't make weight. But I'm also very, very real. The fact that I feel that if we could bring our best look to the stage this year, I think that Flex would step on stage at about 216, 217. But we can't do that because we need to make weight. And we cannot get that look back in a day, day and a half. It's just not possible. I'm sorry, it's not. I know what he looks like when he's at his prime, which which on this prep is going to be about 217 roughly. Mm -hmm. But that still needs another eight to 10 pounds of real quality muscle. And the reason why I say that is because William's stepping on stage at about 234, 235 roughly. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of difference in their height. They are structurally different, I, I understand that. But you need to be carrying a certain amount of density and thickness on your frame if you're gonna be competitive in that Mr. Olympia and those the pinnacle events like the, or the higher level events like the Arnold's for instance. And as much as I can accept and as much as Flex can accept second, third, fourth, or fifth in any show that we do, we're also wanting to go there and, and, and bring our best look and place our best. So it doesn't make sense to me to put Flex on stage in the Olympia next year when I know that we need that extra 12 months to bring a package which is going to be very competitive. Very competitive. Mm. And I don't mean that disrespectfully against any other competitor because to win any pro show is a phenomenal achievement. But I know that Flex is more than capable of, of winning more than just any pro show. I know that he's got the ability to win the Arnolds. Mm. I do know that he's got the ability to be a major force within that in that Olympia, but he needs to put that added mass on his frame in order to be competitive. One of the things that people, you know, criticize William for is he's not tall enough or he's not big enough. Bodybuilding isn't being based about who's the biggest guy on stage. Bodybuilding wasn't built on who's the tallest on stage. To me, bodybuilding is about a multiple different aspects. It's about symmetry, shape, muscle bellies, refinement, separation muscle size, hardness, all of these things. It's like a perfect blend of everything. I personally feel that William ticks every single box. Does that mean that they're going to say, Rami, you're too tall for you know to win this show? <laughs> no, it's not about height. But my point is that why is William competitive? William's competitive because he's a blend of everything. But if William didn't have the mass on his frame, then I would understand that he wasn't carrying enough mass to be a major contender. Right. And William is going to be a major contender this year at the Olympia. He was a major so my contender last year. Yeah. He was a... <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. You know, I personally feel that, you know, me personally, I feel that William probably should have been second. Now, Absolutely. I'm not saying that I disagree. You know, I'm not saying that I disagree with the judges' decisions because I, because I respect Every judge, because it's you an respect opinion. it, but you do disagree, just like I disagree. It doesn't matter. We all have our own opinions, like you said. You opinions, know, but yeah. William should you have know. been second last year. We all know that. You know. Uh -huh. So my point is, is that for flex then to be competitive and competitive to me means you know you're in that top six, okay? Right. You're in that final group. He needs that added size, and I'm not going to rush that How size. How much size do you think he needs, uh, Neil? At this point, I think he needs about another ten to about ten pounds of real quality muscle. You know, How on top of what. So that means he's going to be about 20, 220, 227, you know, 228, roughly. And no, number is just a number. It is, right. but at the same time, quality, quality numbers equate to a quality look. And I'm not willing to force that growth and development in 12 months. I respect gotcha. my athlete's health and happiness more, more than anything else. And that, to me, is more important than any title, whatever it mm -hmm. may be. So, of course, Flex and myself and Ali still have to sit down and talk about what show is going to be next for him. Um, but to be honest, we'd have that conversation at the Olympia because, it, because our focal point really now is over the next three and a half weeks. Sure. And um, I'm super happy how he's looking. Um, I know that he's very happy where he's looking. He's, you know, he's, he's got the concerns about, you know, we've got to make weight, but uh, that, let me do my job. It, it's not going to be a problem. We just need to just focus on day by day.
You know, Neil, it's funny because I, I put up a video the other day of, that, of some of the pro that progress back picture that you showed on your uh, Instagram and everyone was freaking out and I kind of was equating, so he looked like Dorian on first glance and we were talking about him making weight and uh, you know, how he, was, he had been texting me that you know, he's a little concerned about it because he really has no body fat left. And, I, and, I, and I, I can't tell you how many other gurus out there, I won't mention names, have contacted me saying, I got the perfect, I got the perfect protocol, have them call me, yeah. you know. Like, like, and I said, I think Neil's got it under control, he's been doing it for the last, I said, 10 years with Flex. I said, but I, I thought it was just funny, everyone always likes to jump in when there's, a, when there's like a guy who's very successful and they want to be a piece of the, they want a piece of the action, you know. Well, if they want a piece of the action, they can have the they can have the they can have the action. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm I'm confident in what we're you know what we're 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 doing and what we're wanting to achieve. Sure. And um, and also believe me, you me, Dave. You know mm. those pictures, they're great. That's not the true reflection of what Flex looks like. Believe you me, he looks just as impressive, or maybe more impressive from the front than the rear. And Flex really? is dangerous as hell from the from the rear. And the new pictures I had him off him yesterday even freaked me out, to be honest with you. Yeah. And there's only one, and there's literally like, you know, two pound difference. It's, it's, um, it's a great look, man. Yeah, it's yeah. a great look. Well, Neil, congratulations on all the great work you're doing with your clients. Congratulations on being able to make a living out of the sport that you love. And uh, keep giving back to the industry because we need way, way more people like you in our industry. It would be a much better place. But I appreciate it, and as I appreciate everything that you do for you know everybody in the industry, having a platform to educate people with with reality and facts and not fiction, I think is really important. Not everybody wants to hear the truth, um, but I think that it's important that people stay true to themselves and, and, and follow a path which is healthy and is accurate, and which will allow them to go on to achieve you know more things, not just short term but long term as well. Mm. I agree. Amen to that. Great words from a wise, wise Yoda Jedi warrior, Neil Hill. <laughs> and that's going to take <laughs> us to the end of another episode of RX Muscles Iron Road to the Olympia 2018, brought to you by Redcon One. I'm Dave Palumbo, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. <laughs>